keyboard enthusiast or you just like looking at the pretty keyboards or you're just here for the tingles and the relaxation this video is going to have something for everybody because NewFi has hooked us up with their two latest creations uh, as represented by the keyboard waifu here making her glorious return um, some of you might remember that last year I checked out a new Fi's Halo 65 this board right here and you might recall that I liked it very much um, new Fi is one of those I don't really know what to call them other than like indie keyboard companies that's really pushing the envelope uh, there's sort of this class of company that you can tell is um, you know run by keyboard enthusiasts and people who really care about their product and pay a lot of attention to detail when it comes to designing and executing on their keyboards um, and they're not you know, some big manufacturer like uh, Corsair or a uh, Logitech or a Razer. They're this sort of mid-tier boutique company that produces really nice stuff um, that honestly, like, blows those big manufacturers' products out of the water. <laughs> and you can tell, you can tell that care is put into their products. So, um, I really quite enjoyed the Halo 65 when I checked it out last year. It is quite beautiful. It is uh, really well made uh, and it has some really fun features like um, a halo light, as the name would suggest, uh, around the edge. So along this margin, there's an RGB halo light that shines outwards and then also inwards. Um, and uh, a really lovely aluminum frame um, and all kinds of other stuff. So some really nice sound dampening, sound control. So uh, I'm gonna put aside the Halo 65 for the moment because we've got, as I said, two brand new products here today from NewFi. We've got their Halo 75, which is right here and also underneath. Oh, check it out, the Halo 96. So, these are in the same family as the Halo 65, as the name suggests, but the Halo 75 is a 75% layout rather than a 65%, and you guessed it, the Halo 96 is a 96% layout. So, um, they've got you covered, right, whether you want uh, the compact form factor with the 65, the still compact but highly functional form factor of the 75, or you want the full functionality and numpad offered by the Halo 60, or 96, pardon me. Um, and all of them come decorated with their mascot, the keyboard waifu. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm, I'm slightly, slightly uh, disappointed that we have the same keyboard waifu for each keyboard. I'm pretty sure this is the same one that we saw on the Halo 65, and I'm pretty sure the Halo 96 underneath also has uh, the same anime mascot on it. I really kind of want them to have a separate waifu for each keyboard model. And then the next logical step is for them to just make a mobile gacha game where you pull for mechanical keyboards embodied by, you know, anime waifus. I mean, I'd play that. <laughs> Come on, get on a new fight. Um, no, but anyway, um, so that's what we're going to be looking at here today, but not only, not only is it going to be these keyboards, but new Fi also sent over a pair of their um, matching uh, two-tone wrist rests rests to go with the keyboards which are beautiful and they diffuse the light from the halo light uh, through their um, machined acrylic uh, frame and then their uh, sort of this uh, two-piece construction with this machined aluminum on the front edge we'll look at that um, and then also you guys new fly sent over some of their let me just grab the mirror their new baby raccoon switches baby raccoon switches and we will uh pop one of these open later but these are a uh, gator on cross new five collaboration 
operation. Uh, they are designed to be very smooth but snappy linear switches with excellent sound, so I'm really looking forward to checking those out. These are the sequel to New Five's very popular Baby Kangaroo BBK switches, which they sent over last time. Um, and I just realized this is actually full of Gator on Reds because uh, the Baby Kangaroos are in the Halo 65 over here. But uh, anyway, I swapped those out. Uh, but anyway, yes, so we will be checking out the Baby Raccoon switches as well. And then on these boards are some of Gatoron's new switches as well. They're in-house switches made by, I guess, an undisclosed OEM, I suppose. Um, they're Rose Glacier tactiles and they're Night Breeze linears. So, wow, we've got so much here. We got two keyboards, we got three switches, we got two rest rests. Let's get to it. Oh yeah, and shout out to NewFi, of course, for sending over all this tantalizing product and uh, for sponsoring this video. I appreciate their support very much and uh, I appreciate them sending over stuff for us to take a look at here on the channel and enjoy together. So without further ado, let's actually jump in and uh, check out these products. Okay, so here we have the Halo 75 in box that you guys just saw. I've just removed the Halo 96 from underneath. <laughs> um, these are hefty keyboards. Uh, I gotta say, a new find knows how to make a dense keyboard between the aluminum frame and the several layers of silicone dampening that they put in their boards. Um, they really make a, a board that feels dense and high quality. And of course that, that helps with sound control. So the first thing you notice when you pick up the box is it's got heft to it. Well, maybe not the first thing. The first thing you might notice is the, the keyboard waifu, but um, this is the exciting side of the box where we have our anime girl mascot. Um, and we've also got some information about what we expect to find within this is an ANSI layout, but it's also available in ISO and JIS. Um, it comes with a keyboard, a cable. These are wireless keyboards, uh, so it comes with a 2.4 GHz receiver, 17 additional keycaps, so you can play around with the accent caps and the colorway. Um, seven extra switches uh, for replacements or funsies, because um, these are also um, hot swappable keyboards, of course. Um, some stickers, which feature this lovely lady right here. Um, keycap switch and puller, and uh, of course, um, quick guide and such. Um, around the edges, we've got some information about new five. It says here, small company founded by a group of boring guys. I dig it. When we can't make interesting products, this studio will no longer exist. I just love that. I love that that's their entire, like, description and mission statement. It seems pretty legit. And then over here, just to drive it home, only fun products are worth creating. Uh, so, these guys know what's up. Uh, and in my experience with them, they've definitely lived up to that, that, that philosophy. <laughs> Prior to the Halo 65, I also checked out their Air 75, which is a very fun, low-profile mechanical keyboard if you want something very, very slim. It's great for that. So this is the boring side of the box. It simply says Halo 75 with a damper kit. We'll talk a bit about what they've done with their space bar once we get into the box, but they've got something special going on with sound dampening in their space bar. Designed by New Fi. Their website. And then over here, we've got some of the features all listed out. They are a BBT keycaps. They claim double shot. I seem to remember that they're actually die sub on the Halo 65, but maybe maybe they've upgraded them for the 75. Uh, the KOP means, um, well, I don't really know what it means, but it refers to their um, profile, um, which I guess is a custom profile. I've never seen it elsewhere, but it's kind of a tallish. 
reddish, pleasantly rounded kind of profile. You'll see when we get inside and take a look. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, of course. Bluetooth 5 as well for multi-device connectivity. Hot swappable sockets, halo light effects, side light, which is their indicator light bar. 75% layout, aluminum case. Gator on G Pro V2 switches if you get it with that, but this has their own um, either Night Breeze or Rose Glacier. I'm not sure what's on this one, but we'll find out. Um, Damper kit, 4000 milliamp hour battery, and Mac and Windows compatible. And just in case you forgot that these guys are all about the fun, <laughs> says here, focus on the fun in function. It's great. It's corny, but it's great. Like I said, I, I like the way these guys present their stuff. So, uh, that's that. Uh, this is a, a sleeve, and so there's a box inside here, so let's slide it out. on the fun and function once again. Oh, we actually have a little information on this side of the box here. So this is the Halo 75 in their ionic white colorway with the night breeze switches. So these will be the linears. And uh, the ionic white is the same colorway that I have the Halo 65 over there in that I just showed you. Um, and it's a beautiful colorway. Uh, the matte black colorway is the other one they offer. And I believe the Halo 96 is in matte black, so we'll get to see both. <laughs> so freaking kawaii. Look at this. Look at this. 
Isn't that just unbelievably adorable? <laughs> and then the same uh, art from the, the outside of the box there. And then we got the new file logo over here as well. Uh, super fun sticker pack, and I never ended up using the ones from my Halo 65, but I still think they're pretty fun. So we'll put that aside for the moment. Here is the keyboard hanging out um, under this uh, dust cover, also in a plastic bag. I don't remember the plastic bag from the Halo 65, but it's possible that it had it and I've just forgotten. So let's uh, set this aside again for the moment and just check out what else we've got in here before we get to the keyboard itself. We have a really nicely presented accessory kit. This, I believe, is different from what they had before, but it's pretty slick looking. We have, of course, our USB cable here. Um, we've also got, as it says here, seven extra switches, 17 extra keycaps, one keycap and switch puller, plus the cable. I do remember something kind of like this uh, for the Halo 65, but uh, I don't know if it had that. This, uh, this sleeve. Uh, so let's just pop this open quick. So what PBT is, um, so there's a bunch, well, 
a few different kinds of plastics, two primarily, that you might get keycaps made of. Um, and uh, one is ABS, which is um, a, a nice feeling plastic, but it has a tendency to shine up with finger oils. And, uh, you know, it, it has a, a slightly different sound signature than this material, which is PBT. PBT is often favored by enthusiasts because um, it doesn't uh, get shiny the way that ABS does. It retains its nice matte appearance. Um, and it's got, some people claim, at least uh, a thockier, slightly deeper sound signature. Um, the double shot part means that these keycaps are made of two separate pieces of plastic fused together. So we have the outer piece here in white, and then the inner piece in black. And the inner piece uh, protrudes through to the front here, and that is how the printing, the legend, is made on the front. This does a couple of things. One, it makes it exceptionally durable. It's probably going to last forever because it's literally two pieces of plastic. It's not like this will ever rub off or scratch off because it's, it's literally just plastic coming through. Um, the other thing it does is um, allow, in this case, for nice crisp legends where the printing is very sharp. You don't have um, any um, diffusion or, or blooming of, of ink into the plastic the way you sometimes get on uh, dye sublimated keycap legends. So we get nice durable keycaps with nice crisp legends and um, that's why double shot keycaps are generally considered to be the highest quality available. So props to NuFi for going with the double shot caps here. The other thing that you see here is NuFi's KOP profile, which is somewhere kind of in between. Uh, gosh, what is it like? It's a little bit like how OEM in its height, but it's got these kind of rounded off edges, which is a little bit more like a, like an SA, but they're not rounded this way. Uh, it's not spherical, it's just rounded this way. So I actually can't think of what it's closest to, like a common profile that it's most similar to, but um, it's, a, it's a, you know, aesthetically appealing profile in my opinion, and uh, also quite functional from my experience with the Halo 65. So there you have it. And of course, if you look at the other colors of keycaps over here, double shot with the orangey red on the outside and the white on the inside, which makes the legend. So good stuff. Um, we can take a quick look at these various various switches just um, for a quick introduction. We will take a closer look at each of these switches later, but uh, here's the uh, night breeze, which should sound nice and smooth. Let's see how it sounds. Very nice. The bottom out um, is a little clacky. That one's male. Like, tappy. Not necessarily clacky. It's got a pleasant sound to it, but it is very audible for sure. The action is very smooth. Um, as a linear switch, there's no resistance um, at any point in the action. Well, there's the resistance of the spring, and this feels like a pretty middling weight on this spring. I'm saying maybe 55 grams. I'm not actually sure what it is, but that's just a guess. Um, but there's no bump is what I mean. Um, a tactile switch or a clicky switch will have a point where there's additional resistance in the action. The 
this one is just smooth from top to bottom. Uh, these are factory lubricated, and um, that is quite apparent in their smoothness and quietness. There's more I can say about them, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, this is the Rose Glacier, which is very similar, but tactile, so it will have a little bump partway down. So it does. It's actually kind of right at the very top, this very little pre-travel here. I just push a tiny bit, and already it's coming over that bump. There's the bump. Right there. has a very pleasant and snappy feeling. Tactile bump, and uh, similarly nice and quiet. Put that pronounced bottom out. Very nice. Uh, then we have the linear of the Baby Raccoon. This is that uh, Gatoron collab, and feels a little heavier, I think, than the rose glit or than the um, night breeze. It has a slightly different, less tappy bottom out sound. It's a more muted kind of bottom out. Listen. Here we can do an apples to apples comparison, just for funsies. Here is the baby raccoon. I would say a quieter bottom out, but a louder rebound. And here is the night breeze. That the click on that one or the tap is the bottom out rather than the rebound. Whereas here we have quiet bottom out, but a louder rebound. sounding switches, honestly. Um, I will say, though, that uh, I think the Night Breeze actually has less stem wobble than the Baby Raccoon. Listen. That's me just kind of wobbling the stem on the Baby Raccoon and then on the Night Breeze. I can't really wobble it because it's it's just more stable. So um, it feels like the night breeze might have slightly tighter tolerances in terms of the uh, the stem. I said we weren't going to take a lot of time on these switches right now, but they're just really fun. So <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll talk more about those later. Um, and then and then and then we've got. Raccoon, which is a pretty loud switch, honestly, for a tactile. Tiny bit of spring ping in there, too. Once again, a Gator on collab. Um, yeah, a very springy, uh, snappy, tactile feel, um, but a bit louder than the, uh, the Rose Glacier. Once again, let's do a quick little comparison here. Baby Raccoon. Rose Glacier. Actually, they're both pretty loud, aren't they? <laughs> Very similar acoustic properties, I'm not going to lie. I will say the Rose Glacier does feel a little tighter. Once again, I think there's less stem wobble going on there. 
Let's do a little test again, listening to the baby raccoon. You can hear it has a bit of stem wobble on all sides, listening to the rose glacier. A lot less wobble. It, it is more stable. That's kind of cool to, to see. And then, of course, we have our Gatorons, our, you know, our workhorse switches here. Gatoron G Pro Red 2.0, Brown 2.0, which is a much lighter tactility than the other ones. And the Clicky Boy, the blue.
so gives you all the functions, uh, the various indicator light colors, um, how to control the backlighting, the halo light, uh, all that good stuff, uh, other secondary layer key combos. And then on the back, wouldn't be new five we didn't get a poster of our keyboard wipe. I should really put these up on the wall, like behind where I stand when I'm filming and streaming. Just just for you know, for fun. People will be like, what? It's not an anime, it's just a keyboard. But uh focus on the fun and function once again. Anyway, there you go. What other keyboard company gives you an anime keyboard waifu poster with their product? None, as far as I'm aware. Maybe that should change. <laughs> okay, so... The keyboard itself... A while to get here, but here we are. This is just one of two. <laughs> the second one will go a lot faster though because we've already looked at all the accessories and I suspect they'll be the same, so we'll mostly focus on the board for the Halo 96. So that's what we've got here. 
Ah, uh, we have, of course, those accent keys here. One, two, three. Very nice. Um, the top frame is made out of uh, aluminum. This is uh, some kind of electrophoresis coating, um, which apparently differs from an anodized aluminum by being a bit more durable, evidently. Um, but it's this really nice matte finish all the way around. We have the new Phi logo uh, engraved right up here. And over here we have their um, side light, which is their indicator light. You can take on a variety of different colors for various uh, indicators. Got a small blemish actually right under the indicator light right there. But hopefully that'll just come off if I give it a little, give a little wipe there. Um, and then around the edges, we get to see this Greco-Roman inspired kind of scalloping, this kind of wavy look they've got going on here. This is um, what they call their ionic design because it's inspired by ionic columns, like old Greek columns that have these sort of, um, you know, this fluting up the side. Um, this bottom portion is ABS, so it's plastic, but it's a really nice match for the aluminum on the top. It is matte white, just like that aluminum. And despite being plastic, it is very dense and high quality feeling. So we come around the back, and we have a few things to look at. We have our USB-C port. We have our a mode selector with uh, wired or wireless there. And we also have our Windows or Mac mode selector switch as well. They're all in this minty green color, which of course matches perfectly the escape key on the top there. Really nice attention to detail. Great color matching. Over on the other side, we have a nice little spot to store our USB dongle. So our little USB receiver hangs out over here in the same color matched green, which is really nice because it means you will always remember which keyboard it goes with. It goes with the one with that same green. So I appreciate that. We can see here that um, there is um, a slight angle to the keyboard just by default, um, but it does have feet on the bottom, as we'll see in a moment, which will flip out and allow it to sit at a higher angle, should you wish. If you're one of those crazy people who likes to hold your wrists like, like this while you're typing. Um, and then nothing along the front. Very minimalistic and clean along the front, except for something that you can barely see here, but it's there, and that is, if I can get it to focus, that is the halo light, which is sandwiched right in between the top aluminum frame and the bottom ABS. This little crack here is where all that RGB light shines through, and it actually does put out quite a bit of light despite being so thin looking. Um, and it goes all the way around. There is a, a diffuser ring, which is hard to see, but it's, it's in there. And it casts light 360 degrees, hence the halo. Um, moving around the back, we have, once again, some really nice color matching. Our two-stage flip-out feet here. Stage one, stage two, come, of course, with the anti-slip rubber on them and are beautifully color matched with our enter key on the front here. We also have, if those are down, more anti-slip rubber feet, which are color matched with our green on the front here, which, again, I just love the attention to detail here. They could have just made them black or white or whatever, but no, they went with the color matched options. And we have the new Phi logo engraved on the back and a little metal plate, which is protected and uh, gives us our info, uh, new Phi. Uh, new Phi Studio Halo 
Keys Wireless Mechanical Keyboard Revision 1 Made in China There you go Very shiny Very nice And of course this Ionic theme Comes around the back here With these ridges But you can hear that Despite being ABS plastic On the bottom here solidity to it. Pretty good density. Part of that will be due to the 4,000 milliamp hour battery hanging out in there, which gives this thing quite a bit of battery life. But also, part of that is due to the silicone base dampener, which is inside, underneath the PCB, and provides sound dampening and weight and density on the bottom of the board. So, that that. However, that is not the only silicone that NuFi has going on in here. Um, we've also got a plate silicone, so if we pop off one of these uh, keycaps, where did I put? Uh, there we are. Uh, sure, we'll just do the escape here. So, once again, double shot. KOP profile PBT keycaps and they're decently thick. They're not the thickest keycaps I've ever seen, but they're pretty darn good. Like there's very little flex there, even if I squeeze real hard. So um, they're pretty well made. They feel and sound nice. Um, we have, of course, our uh, Night Breeze linear switch here. Um, and we will pop that out. There we go. Um, so you can see that underneath, underneath that switch is uh, a silicone dampening layer. I'm pretty darn sure. I'm pretty sure that's what we're looking at there. Let me just verify that, but it certainly was on the Halo 65. Yeah, it totally is. So you can hear how... If, if I was tapping directly on the PCB, that'd be a sharp sound, but instead... It's nice and quiet and dampened because each um, switch has a silicone pad under it. In fact, I think it coats the whole PCB which is really nice. You can also see that we have a, a metal plate here, probably steel, maybe aluminum actually. Could be aluminum, not sure. Um, but we have a metal plate. And then we have uh, a five pin socket underneath that. So um, it'll accommodate both three or five pin switches. The um, included switches are five pin. Uh, which is to say they have the central pole as well as the two contact pins and two additional pins on either side of the bottom housing there uh, to provide some additional stability. Um, but the socket will accommodate either. Um, and then we've got uh, the M SMD, the surface mounted LED underneath or I should say, well, underneath the switch, but at the top of the socket. So these are north-facing sockets, which is fine in every case, except for sometimes there can be interference problems with cherry profile keycaps and north-facing sockets. I've personally never found it to be a problem, but some people swear it's an issue. But, you know, fact is, if you're keeping the stock keycaps on here, it doesn't matter. They should be designed to not interfere. So, um, that's all good. So, um, let's take another closer look at our Night Breeze switch here. So, um, one of the uh, unique features of this switch is um, the stem is made of what Nufi calls um, 
a next generation thermoplastic, I think. Um, and the name is escaping, right? Escaping me. It's keto, um, ketos, ketone, something. <laughs> I forget. But uh, you can look it up on their website anyway. The name is maybe less important than the, the properties, which are evidently that it is um, more elastic and um, you know flexible than um, other popular STEM materials like uh, POM. And it is similarly, I believe, a self-lubricating plastic. So um, it evidently, according to NuFi, has very appealing acoustic characteristics. Um, and uh, I believe it is also an extra long stem. So um, it's really intended to, to get that bottom out sound on every stroke they want. They want you bottoming out for that sound. Um, and of course we have, um, I guess, polycarbonate housing or maybe PA66. I can't remember what they what they said, but it's in this nice light blue paired with the black stem. So I guess that's the night breeze part. Um, but it, it feels quite appealing and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing it in action as well. Um, and you know what? Let's pop it open. Why not? <laughs> this video is already going to be tremendously long, so what's another couple minutes? Uh, taking a look at the inside of the switch. Let's see, let's see, let's see what we can do here. We got it. There we go. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle <laughs> to get these things open. But uh, you can see we have a, I believe, a 22 millimeter single stage spring here. Let's just uh, pull out the old tweezers here. millimeter single stage spring. Reasonably light. And then oops, we have of course our stem polyketone. That's what they called it. Polyketone. Um, you can see it is lightly lubricated. Hopefully. Might be hard to tell in this light but oops. It is slightly, slightly lubricated, which is what you want. You don't want it over lubed. You just want it nice and comfy. And then the bottom housing here with our contact down the bottom here. And that's pretty much that. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's put it back together here. Oops, it would help if I put the spring in, wouldn't it? Like so. Like so. So, there we go. And um, I didn't mention it, but we do have a little window here for the RGB light to shine on through. So, that is the Night Breeze switch from NuFi. Nice feeling and sounding, at least uh, in isolation like this. But, oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, it'll be really nice to hear it on the board. There we go. And we'll put our keycap back on. My hands 
are slightly, slightly greasy from the lube. Um, but just a little bit. And let's put that aside. And let's check out the stabilizers on here because, as you all know, probably by now, or if you don't, you're about to find out that the stabilized keys are really the key to, no pun intended, the key to making a keyboard sound like a million bucks. So if you can nail the sound and feel of the stabilized keys, that goes a long way to making the keyboard feel more premium. And uh, Newfi did a pretty good job on the Halo 65, but it wasn't quite perfect. Like, it was very good. But I'm hoping that with the Halo 75, they might have leveled up their game even further because I believe that they've taken the opportunity between the 65 and the 75 to really fine-tune their acoustics and implement some other acoustic controls that uh, they didn't have at the release of the Halo 65. So let's see how they've done with their stabilized keys. We'll start with the backspace. Exemplary. Uh, there's a teensy bit of tick on this side, but it's so minimal. Um, it's very good. Let's listen to the enter key. So here we have 
Okay, so there's there's two solutions at work here. One is um, the uh, um, construction that they've got going on underneath here. This might look like it's all just one piece of PBT, but actually the uh, stem here, or stem socket, whatever you call this, you can see this is silicone, you see? This is silicone, it's squishy which um, I think really does help with the sound control. Um, but then also we have polycarbonate on either side here that adds weight and density and stability to that central um, stem socket. So this is part of their ghost bar construction. Then they've also got some extra ridging going on in here to provide additional rigidity and structure to the space bar. And then I think, yeah, on either end, it's just BBT. So that's where it's contacting the stabilizers, of course. But then underneath, underneath the ghost bar, we also have a strip of dampening silicone here one on this side of the switch, one on this side, it says here, designed by NuFi Spacebar Silicone. Um, and then of course, we have the stabilizers on either end, which are nicely lubed. You can just tell by playing with it like that, you can hear no rattle in there. And same on this side. And then they're bottoming out on that silicone um, dampening layer on top of the PCB, which is why they're so quiet on the bottom end. These are, of course, plate mounted. So if you wanted to, you could quite easily lift off uh, the space bar silicone, I suspect. Yep, just comes out like so. Very easy. And uh, you can pop out the switch and you could pop out these stabilizers nice and easy, but we're not going to worry about that today because um, we can see what we need to see from here, and uh, they sound great, so I have no intention of doing anything with those because they sound and feel excellent. I don't think there's anything I could do really to make them better. So, um, put our space bar back on. good. So, wow. Well, we've done a whole lot of, a whole lot of, uh, investigating on this board, but we have a whole nother keyboard left to go, you guys. So I'm going to unbox the 96. I might just for funsies do it. No talking style because we've already talked a lot for like an hour here and seen everything there is to see here. So maybe I'll do the Halo 96, no docking. It'll be much faster because we've already seen all the features. It's just gonna be a different layout and a bit larger, but I think all the features we have on the 75 here also apply to the 96. And then once that's done, we're gonna bring them both back and we will take a look at the RGB backlighting as well as of course the halo lighting um and then we will do a typing test because how could we not with keyboards that look and sound this good so but for the time being let's check out that halo 96 very quietly Thank <laughs> you. 
enjoyed that no docking unboxing of the Halo 96. I actually quite enjoyed doing that. If you guys would like more no docking keyboard unboxings in the future, please do let me know down in the video description. It's nice for me to just be able to focus on the, the you know, um, tactile experience of doing the unboxing and, you know, making some nice sounds as we go along and such, so, but anyway, I'm back here again talking, obviously, um, and I actually, I kind of lied to you guys, I said we were gonna go straight into the RGB and such after the Halo 96 unboxing, but we have a couple of things yet to do, <laughs> which I forgot. First of all, we have the two-tone wrist rests to take a look at. We've been given two of them. One to match our Halo 75 down here, which you can't really see, but it's the right size. And then one to match our Halo 96 over here. So let's open them both up and take a quick look at each of them. Um, I must say, that uh, new fire really does bring it when they send stuff over. It's it's the full meal deal. Um, and I really liked their two tone wrist rest with the um, Halo 65. I thought it was a, a really beautiful piece of hardware to add. Um, I should point out that the there we go. The um, rest is an additional $30, I believe, $29, $30, something like that, um, on top of the base price, which for the Halo 75, I believe, ranges from, uh, I think, $120 to $140, depending on the switches you have in it. And then the Halo 96 ranges from, I think, $130 to $150, once again, depending on the switches that you choose. So, um... Uh, the wrist rest is sold separately, but um, it's a really nice feeling wrist rest. Um, and uh, you'll see in a moment that it's extremely solid. And it looks like cash, you guys. It looks so good. Um, that we have 
on the Halo 75 itself, so I'm just going to rudely push the Halo 95 or 96 out of the way here. Like so. Just so that you can see. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's why they give us extras, because this one actually just came off. To be fair, I was pushing it along. Maybe they've had issues with people losing, losing the existing ones or something. You know what, let's, let's do this properly. Let's move this up here. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. Like so. So, there is the, the look, the aesthetic. Um, and you'll see once we get the lights on that it's really gorgeous. Now, the one drawback that I will say that I've encountered with these uh, two-tone wrist rests is that they are pretty sensitive to finger oils. Um, and remember I mentioned earlier my fingers were slightly oily from opening up that switch, uh, the lubrication in the switch. So you can see my fingers are leaving little marks on this matte surface. It is easy to clean, of course, just a little bit of soap and water and it'll clean right up. But um, it is worth noting that uh, they do get a little bit mucky that way if you're not careful. Um, but it's so worth it because they look really, really good even with the lights on, the room lights on. Uh, you can see that they look pretty fantastic, but they look even better once the room lights are off and the RGB and the halo lighting is on. So this is, of course, the Ionic White one to match the Halo 75 in Ionic White. It is clearly matched in both color and size. And then we have also for the Halo 96, we have another one. I'm just kind of running out of space here, you guys. Two much keyboard stuff. The same two-tone wrist rest for the Halo 96. It is size matched and color matched. We have that new Phi logo here, of course. The label over here. Let's uh, put this one open. studio right there. The edges are all very nicely um, beveled so there's no sharp edges. Once again that excellent attention to detail and the join is very well done. There's no lip to speak of. It's pretty much continuous. And there it is, the Halo 96 with its two-tone 
I stressed. By the way, what do you guys think of this colorway? I think it looks really sharp. I almost, well, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I like it more than the Ionic White or not, but it looks really good. The black and white, just fantastic. So, uh, and as you can see, they, they do have the, uh, the enter key over here on the numpad in the same accent color as the escape key over there. So, and just like the Halo 75, the Halo 96, it sounds fantastic in terms of the stabilized keys and especially that space bar, holy smokes. I think that's probably the nicest sounding space bar I've ever heard. I'm pretty sure, just listen. sounds incredible. So, um, wow. Good job on the ghost bar and you fine. Uh, I think the ghost part is supposed to imply that it sounds very quiet. It is pretty quiet, but it's pleasant, deep, foggy quiet rather than a uh, clacky kind of sound. So good. All right, friends, we have one more thing to do here, and that is to look at our baby raccoon. The little switches that we talked about earlier. We did actually see these already, but we'll do a quick rundown because New Five is kind enough to send a whole bushel of them. Um, so, as you can see on the front here, these are linear switches with a 55 gram operating force and two mils of pre-travel, uh, two millimeters, I should say, which, um, in this case, these are linear switches, not tactile, so the pre-travel is just before actuation, but there's no bump, um, and a total travel of 3.6 millimeters, which is a little shallower than your typical MX Red or something like that, but, um, not dramatically so. So, um, they come with these, these light brown stems, which I guess are raccoon inspired, and I'm not sure. The baby kangaroo naming made sense to me because they were very bouncy switches, very snappy, so kangaroo made sense. Raccoon, I'm not quite so sure what they're getting at with raccoon, but you know what, that's fine. Um, we have the clear upper housing with the lens in the top here to help diffuse the light from the LEDs underneath. And the opaque white bottom housing, I think it's nylon or something along those lines. Um, and then uh, a POM stem, I believe, POM plastic stem, which is a very popular choice for switches, that it is a soft, self-lubricating kind of plastic with good acoustic qualities. Um, and then these are factory lubricated and uh, designed specifically to have a very snappy rebound. But you can hear, listen. As we talked about with the baby kangaroos and I think the baby raccoon earlier, the bottom out is quieter than the night breeze switches that we heard earlier. But the rebound is louder. smoothness is really pleasant. I will say, again, I do notice a little bit more stem wobble than on the Night Breeze or on the Rose Glacier, but that's more um, a testament to how stable <laughs> the Night Breeze and Rose Glacier switches are, rather than a condemnation of this one. Uh, this is pretty typical amount of stem wobble for any switch, really. It's certainly nothing egregious. So, anyway... Gosh, I don't know. Between this and the Night Breeze, it's hard to say which I prefer. I think this one might just have a slight edge in terms of smoothness, but I think the Night Breeze has a slight edge in terms of stability. The Night Breeze, I think, sounds nicer on the bottom out, but I think this one has a nice snappy rebound. So, Night Breeze versus Baby Raccoon. 
was a pretty tough call but uh, they both feel very good it is very smooth it's like buttery very nice and uh, we have this whole this whole set here, so at some point I might try swapping them um, onto the um, Halo 96 here, which of course has those Rose Glacier switches by default. I don't think I'll do that in the video, but uh, I might try it myself later. For now though, for now, it's actually time to get to the RGB. <laughs> this is going to be a freaking epically long video, you guys, but we got to do the RGB. And we gotta do the typing test, and then we'll get back together here, and we'll have a final little chat about just my opinions and, and usage impressions and uh, sort of a wrap-up situation. So, but without further ado, let's get on with the lighting. And here we have the Halo 75 plugged in and looking, well, fairly colorful anyway uh, the default backlight is actually pretty reserved uh, it's a reactive mode most of the lighting you're seeing here well all of it really is from the edge light which they call of course the halo light um, and you can see that that halo light emits from again that that fairly narrow crack between the the uh, aluminum top portion of the case and the ABS bottom portion of the case, but it looks really nice um, along that kind of uh, scalloped um, <laughs> uh, edging that they have there. Um, that really highlights it. Um, you also saw another feature of the board, which is when it's in a wireless mode, which it currently is, it will turn off after a minute or so to save power. Uh, the minute is pretty quick or maybe it's two minutes i don't know it feels pretty quick though it's a pretty aggressive power saving feature that way but it's not so bad when you're actually using it it's more a problem when i'm sitting here talking about it uh and not actually typing on it so i i do have it plugged in with the 2.4 gigahertz mode right now the usb receiver um but it, it works very well in in each mode, the wired mode, the USB receiver mode, and Bluetooth mode, uh, they all paired right away, both the wireless modes, and um, they work just great. Two things I should point out, I did this out of order, but one is that if you're seeing any flickering on the screen right now, as I always point out, that is not visible in person. There's no IRL flicker on these LEDs. I noticed looking through uh, the screen on the camera, there was a bit of flicker on the edge light particularly. Um, so you might be seeing that and I do apologize, but it's very difficult to eliminate entirely. It's merely a result of the interaction between the frequency of the LEDs and the shutter speed of the camera, and it happens with virtually every keyboard. The other thing that I should point out, since we were just talking about wireless modes, is that the um, uh, pairing instructions for this board are actually incorrect in the quick start guide, and that's very important that you know. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on. The quick start guide says old function and then hold down Q, W, or E in order to uh, put it in Bluetooth pairing mode for that particular slot. Before that, of course, you have to use the switch on the back and uh, switch it to the wireless option. So you switch the switch to the wireless option and then function and the manual says Q, W, or E or Q, or function R for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. However, that is wrong. It's incorrect. Those are not the keys. It's actually function one, two, or three for the Bluetooth slots and function four for the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. So if you get this keyboard or if you already have 
of it and you're trying to figure out how to pair it or get it to switch between Bluetooth slots, that is the secret function. Uh, well, I can just switch it to function one and you see it flashes here and okay, well that's funny because it was paired a second ago. <laughs> But I did factory reset. Actually, that's probably what happened. I, there's a keyword combo for factory reset as well. So let's take this moment. It's a teachable moment. Let's go and add it as a Bluetooth device. So when it's flashing quickly like this, it's in pairing mode. And here it is. I click it. And there we go. It's paired. Okay, so that's actually good to know. I didn't realize that the factory reset would also erase the Bluetooth pairing uh, presets, but now I know, and now you know. But I can demonstrate here now, swapping back and forth between different wireless modes. If we go function four, the light changes color. We are now paired in 2.4 gigahertz mode. If we go back function one, the light changes color. We are now paired in Bluetooth mode. So there you go. <laughs> A little demo of how the Bluetooth uh, functions, but it's uh, it's all very easy to set up and the wireless modes work great. I've had no issues with the connectivity or anything of that sort. Okay, so that uh, was about the wireless, not so much the backlight. Um, let's talk about the lighting again now. So, um, we have, of course, the halo light, and then the backlight, which by default is this reactive mode, where they kind of fade in and out as you press on them. It's honestly really pretty. It looks really nice, especially with the halo light effect. Um, but um, for the sake of showing off each lighting option independently, I'll turn off the halo light for the moment so we can see just the backlight and then I'll do the opposite. Uh, we also have the side light, which is this little guy up here. Don't be confused by the fact that they call it a side light. You might think the side light is the halo light, but no, they call that the, the halo light. This indicator light at the top left is the side light. Confusing, I know. Um, but that can be controlled independently as well. Most of the time it, well, by default, it will show you the various, uh, you know, indicator settings. Um, so it will give you information about battery level. Um, as you saw, it'll show you pairing status. Um, it does some other things too, which I forget. Oh, caps lock, obviously. Well, I guess it's not by default, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, it, it's an indicator light, but it also cycles through the RGB colors here. Um, and we can control that, so I'll show you that after this too. So let's just start by turning off the other light options here. So we can turn off the halo light with function H, and then we can cycle through a few different modes here, which I'll show you after. But for now, uh, there we go, it's off. And I believe we can turn off this indicator light with function question mark, left arrow. Is that right? It doesn't seem to be doing it. I thought that's what it was. Well, that's, oh, I think that is it. Ah, yeah, there we go. It's, it was just on because I had caps lock on. There you go. Function question mark, left arrow. There. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we've got the halo light, the side light, both off. The backlight is still in this reactive mode, which is the default mode. So let's uh, flip through the different uh, modes here. Also, I should point out that um, the Halo 96 works identically to the Halo 75 in terms of the backlight functionality. I will bring it out after this and I will quickly go through the different lighting settings just so you can see it in action. But in terms of like the controls and the functionality, it's identical. So I figure there's no point in going through it all a second time. Um, so um, 
this is another backlight mode function left arrow is how we cycle through these this one is obviously a bit frantic but the good news is we can control the backlight speed with function period and comma and we can slow it right down <laughs> to the point where it looks like a low frame rate game okay so this is another one we've got a cycling uh, rainbow here this is a good setting to show you a few of the other options. We do have brightness levels, and I will say the maximum brightness on this board is quite bright indeed, um, significantly brighter than some of the other boards I've been reviewing and testing out lately. So, um, new Vi definitely, uh, no slouch in the LED brightness department. Also, I would say the color rendition the vibrancy um, is very good. Uh, I would also say better than some of the other keyboards I've been working with recently, which are not bad in their own right, but this is just a little better. The colors are a little more vivid, which um, I really appreciate. Hopefully it's um, not too flickery for you over there on the camera. So um, we can adjust brightness with function up and function down. So this is max. You can see when we hit the maximum, our side light indicator flashes over here. Let's go down a few steps. Okay, so that's off. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five levels of brightness, which is pretty typical. I will say also, the lighting looks really nice with these keycaps. The keycaps with the kind of rounded sides. This uh, um, new Fi's unique profile here. Um, it looks really great with the backlight. They've done a really nice job of making the whole interior of the board just glow, you know? And then when you get the halo light on, the whole thing just glows. And it looks lovely. Also worth pointing out, of course, that these are not shine through keycaps. We already knew that, but just important to, to uh, emphasize. The legends do not illuminate, but you do get a lot of light coming from between the keycaps. Very nice. Um, so let's. Oh, another thing we can talk about here is function right arrow, which doesn't appear to be doing anything here, but on some presets, it should change the color. So let's let's switch to another one. Don't know if it'll do anything here either. Evidently not. Interesting. I wonder if these rainbow ones can only be rainbow. I'm not quite sure. Um, I also don't know if there's a way to control the direction of these effects. I don't think there is off the top of my head. I don't think I saw it in the quick start guide. But um, if there is, I'll put a little note down below this, at the bottom of the screen there if I, if I find one. Okay, here we've got um, some nice ripple effects. Uh, and I really do appreciate that this can get very, very slow indeed. Watch this. Watch how slow it gets. Boom. Almost frozen. <laughs> but no, it's actually very zen. When is this slow? I like it. It's almost meditative. And I actually really appreciate that new file lets you get it down this slow because I really like to keep my keyboard effects nice and slow. So, um, this appears to be some kind of preset, uh, with, uh, maybe this will let us cycle colors. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, I thought function right was supposed to cycle colors, but I don't see any color cycling happening here. And that's the backlight off entirely. Okay, there's a, a solid color option. We've got just kind of a rainbow across the board. There we go. Now we can cycle some colors. Ooh, 
that's vivid. Okay, I knew some of the effects must, uh, you know, allow us to cycle the colors. And there is, of course, for the configurability, bird key, backlight configurability, all that stuff using NewFi software called NewFi Console. We're not going to be looking at that here today in this video, just in the interest of time. Um, but uh, that is available for download from NewFi's site directly. So I think that's all the effects. Oh no, we've got a breathing one. Does that cycle colors? It does. That's good. And a fading through various colors. By the way, if you're hearing the sounds in the background, I do apologize. It's windy outside and the bushes are scritchy scritching on the window. <laughs> so you might hear that in the distance if you're wondering what that is. Okay, and now, oh, this is actually a different reactive mode. It shoots out lines of color. This is another color sort of cycling mode. Another reactive mode. Very nice though. Uh, very pretty kind of twinkling stars effect. And a classic wave. And now we're back to the original. The reactive lighting up mode here. So we can actually uh, leave that like that for the moment. Let's bring the halo light back. So this is how we saw it originally. And the great news is that the halo light controls are exactly the same as the backlight controls, except uh, they have an H in there. So instead of just function and then the various things, it's function H and then the various things. So we will quickly step through the options there. So we had that kind of uh, rainbow marquee previously, and now it looks like we have fading through uh, rainbow colors. Function H left. Uh, this looks like a solid color mode, I think, and function H right should probably let us cycle. Absolutely. That's nice. And function H left again, we get, uh, what is this? A breathing mode. Okay. I think it's going to breathe through different colors, maybe. Or maybe just whatever color you have it set to. It's a very calm breathing mode, isn't it? It's quite nice, actually. Function H left again. Now the halo light is off. And then we're back to the default, this kind of scrolling rainbow marquee. So, uh, I think the halo light combined with the, uh, you know, the um, nice saturated and bright backlight, it all looks really good. Um, and then, of course, we do have the side light, so let's just turn off the halo light one more time. And take a look at this side light situation. So that's function question mark. You might not be able to see this very well, but hopefully you can see it enough. Uh, the default side light option here seems to cycle through various colors. So does that option. I'm not sure what the difference is. <laughs> uh, so does that option. I don't know. I'm not sure what the different modes are. This is a solid mode that I can say, which we can change the color to match the rest of the, the board if we want with the function right arrow option there. And then we have side light in a breathing mode. A nice slow breathing mode. And for both the halo light and the side light, you can in fact control the speed and brightness. So in the same five steps that you can with the backlight. So that's great. And then that's side light off, and then back to the original mode. So let's just uh, turn on the edge light there again. 
and we've had the backlight on this whole time. And that is the lighting situation. There's a lot to configure, really, <laughs> between the backlight, the halo light, and the side light. You have a lot of RGB options, certainly a step above your average keyboard, and I think they all look really nice. Specifically, the saturation and the smoothness on this board look fantastic, and despite how narrow the halo light band is, it actually does cast a fair amount of light down onto your desk surface, as you can see, and it looks really nice with that, that um, sort of fluted, um, scalloped patterning, that ionic patterning along the edges there. Okay, so uh, I will quickly bring out the Halo 96 so that we can just take a quick look at it, but it will look very much the same. And then we will get to uh, the sound test, which I'm sure you've all been waiting for. But first, let's look at the Halo 96 lights. Wait, 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 wait. I lied again. <laughs> I keep forgetting. There's so much to show and talk about in this video. Um, of course, I had to show you guys the uh, two-tone wrist rest. Originally, I had removed it uh, just so that I could show you that halo light effectively, but it's pretty important that you see the way that halo light diffuses into the wrist rest. It's really beautiful and uh, very effective, I think. So this is this is what it does as that light, um, you know, in this particular setting. Uh, makes its way around the edge in that multicolored um, configuration. It shines into, into the acrylic here, and you get this kind of almost northern lights-like effect. It's this beautiful diffusion of the light into the wrist rest. It's very pleasant. I find it very calming. Also, you might be able to see there's a little bit of unevenness to the wrist rest. As I mentioned earlier, it does get a little bit, you know, fingerprinty. It picks up um, just kind of grease easily, like and oils, I guess. <laughs> um, and so um, I probably should have given it a, a little wash down before the video here, but. Uh, I mean, like you can see it at least authentically. <laughs> this is what it looks like after, you know, uh, whatever it's been, a couple weeks of use kind of thing. So it's not too bad, especially when the light's projecting into it. You don't notice it really very much at all. But from certain angles, you can tell that the matte finish just has a bit of, a bit of um, sort of spottiness to it because of the, the uh, you know, oily greasy spots or whatever, but um, easy to easy to remedy with uh, just a bit of warm water and gentle soap. So anyway, I wanted to make sure you saw that uh, before we jump over to Halo 96. Now we're going to look at the Halo 96. And here is the Halo 96 plugged in. Um, actually plugged in this time just for something different rather than the... Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. I've got this one just uh, plugged in via the USB-C um, cable, but um, it has the same wireless modes as the Halo 75. It also has the same backlighting modes as the Halo 75. And of course that same two-tone wrist rest, which I've just thrown on right off the bat here, but you can see that it's got that same edge with the halo light. I will say that because this is the matte black colorway rather than the ionic white, the light is not as bright. The matte black doesn't diffuse or reflect the light as much. It absorbs more of the light and so it doesn't get quite as bright as the ionic white variant. So if that's important to you, something to keep in mind. But it still does a pretty good job of projecting light out onto your desk surface and also into the two-tone wrist rest if you opt for it. The 
lighting controls are the same as before, so function um, left uh, for the backlight situation. Um, we have the same options as with the Halo 75. And um, just trying to get back to the default here. <laughs> There's so many choices. <laughs> There we go. And function H left for the halo light. There. And the side light similarly configurable with function question mark left um, and all the other controls. So um, I won't go into that detail again because you've just seen it with the Halo 75, but I did want to let you see what the Halo 96 looks like plugged in and illuminated and of course um, what the matte black coloration looks like because it is a little bit different it is a little bit uh, dimmer but I will say that uh, this nice longer two-tone wrist rest actually looks really really nice in my opinion because you get even more light diffusing into here along the full length of this wider keyboard so it accentuates that wrist rest even more okay so now that we've talked about and looked at the backlighting the halo light the side light and we also talked and demoed the wireless functionality it's finally time to hear these things i know you guys have been waiting for this and uh i think i think you're gonna enjoy what you hear because these are some nice sounding boards so let's get on to the sound test
so that you have now had a chance to both see and hear these two keyboards in action. What did you think? I'll tell you what I think, because that's what this part of the video is about. <laughs> I think that these are excellent keyboards. I think, uh, you know, it probably comes as no surprise to you that uh, Newfi knows what they're doing, and uh, they've built on the success and the solid foundation of the Halo 65 to create a couple of boards that provide additional options for larger layouts, and in doing so, I think are probably better suited to more people. I do think the 75% is kind of the ideal layout for people who don't need a numpad, and the 96% is the ideal layout for people who do want a numpad. Um, but more than just that, they have refined the uh, sound and feel of these boards as well. Um, both with their um, their brand new switches, their uh, Night Breeze and Rose Glacier switches, and with the space bars, the space bars, their so-called ghost bars, ghostly bars. Um, we'll talk about those more in a moment, but uh, overall, very, very solid boards. Uh, I have encountered no issues using them whatsoever in terms of wired or wireless connectivity, and I've used them now uh, extensively for quite a few weeks, as a matter of fact. I really like them. They are some of my preferred boards to have on my desk at this point in time. Um, there are a few minor gripes I have, and I'll just lay them out right now for, of course, the sake of transparency. Um, one is, uh, as I mentioned, um, not actually with the keyboards, but rather with uh, the wrist rest. While I think these two tone wrist rests look incredible once they have that light diffusing through them, as you saw during the uh, RGB section and typing test there, they do cloud up pretty easily. This is a very minor complaint, and as I said, it is quite easy to clean them with some uh, gentle soap and water, but, um, you know, just through a day's worth of use on your desk, they will get a little bit mucky looking. You can see when I put this down on the desk, there's the uh, just sort of mottled look where I've got like grease spots, I guess, on this matte surface. It's not major. It's just one of those things that comes with the materials and the finish that they're using, but it's important to know, I think, if you're really sensitive to those sorts of things. Um, the other thing is that you might have noticed there's a little bit of jazzy creak in these. It just seems to be the way they have put together the um, ABS bottom housing and the aluminum top housing. a bit more creak and pop than you might like in a product um, of this quality. Like, it feels very solid. It feels high quality. But something to do with that, um, that fitment there just results in a little bit of creakiness. Of course, you never hear that when it's on the desk, when it's in use. It, it never comes up. You only notice it if you're taking the board and flexing it. And if you are... kind of pushing down around the edges like that, then you notice a little bit. Um, but again, a very, very minor gripe. Um, my final, final minor gripe um, has to do with the typing sound and feel just a little bit. Now, I will say, I really do like the typing sound and feel of these boards. They are an obvious cut above a lot of your, you know, more typical, less thoughtful, um, you know, pre builds in this price range. Um, and I, I do think for the most part, I think NuFi has done a very good job with the acoustic tuning, especially actually with the stabilized keys. They're fantastic. But I will say that for some, the sound signature and feel might be just a little flat, a little slappy. And I think that's to do with the silicone dampening, um, you know, switch pads underneath that they use. And it, it, whatever 
you know, technique they use, it just results in a bit of a, a bit of a slap on the bottom out, which both feels and sounds just a little flat. Personally, I like a slightly poppier sound and a slightly bouncier feel. And uh, I think that NuFi could really benefit from going through a gasket mount system. I think that would give the flex and the bounce that uh, that I'm looking for here. You could, maybe you could uh, get a little more pop in the acoustics also with a, a tape mod on the underside of the PCB. That's a common way to do that, to achieve that sound. But I really do think that a slightly bouncier typing experience would really, really just make the feel just dial it right in there um, and I think a gasket mount could achieve that and so I would challenge NuFi to explore gasket mount options they are very popular these days lots of manufacturers that are sort of of NuFi's tier are shipping wards with gasket mounts and so and knowing NuFi, knowing how they like to be on that cutting edge and in fact innovating, uh, I'm willing to bet we're going to see products with gasket mount setups from them pretty soon. Maybe even in the Halo series, the Halo lineup itself, um, or in some new series they might be launching in the future. Um, and then that's not a hint or anything. I don't have any insider knowledge. Uh, but just again, knowing that the those guys really like to innovate and stay on that cutting edge. Um, that just seems consistent with their sort of, um, you know, brand philosophy. So, um, speaking of innovating and staying on the cutting edge, uh, there are a lot of things, as I mentioned, that this, these boards really do excel at. I think, for one, they look beautiful. Uh, New Fi absolutely uh, nails it in the aesthetics department. Um, I think they're some of the best looking pre-builds out there right now, as a matter of fact. I just really love their uh, sense of style, uh, their color choices. Um, I really love um, that sort of ionic design along the sides of these boards. Um, I am a sucker for Greco-Roman aesthetics, of course, but I just love it. Um, I think they're beautiful looking boards, um, both with the lights off and the lights on. Um, I also think that these boards sound fantastic, specifically in the space bar department. Listen to these ghost bars, you guys. Not I think, I'm gonna say it right here. I'm gonna put a line in the sand. This is the best sounding space bar I have ever heard on a pre-built. Bar none. This is the best sounding space bar. Now, I don't know how well that comes through on the microphones, but it's not just the sound, it's also the feel. There's a, a solidity. These bars, especially on the 96, actually, but on both of them. But there's a, a solidity that uh, you just don't get on other space bars. And so, um, mad props to NuFi for, uh, you know, putting in the work to get some really finely tuned space bars, which, as I've said many a time, are the single hardest key on the keyboard to get to sound and feel good. And clearly, they recognize that, and they put in the effort uh, to develop a really nice-sounding space bar. Now, um, I, I think you can actually get the ghost bar on its own, uh, like a separate purchase. I should have checked that before I recorded this, but uh, check on NuFi's website. I think you can purchase the ghost bar separately. I suspect in a variety of colors, but um, anyway, there is the link down in the video description, of course, where you can click through and check out all that stuff, but I'm pretty sure if you just want to pick up the ghost bar and level up your space bar sound like that, uh, you can do that. Um, but if you're in the market for a pre-built, pre-built board in that sort of 100 and 
130 to $150 range, uh, which is a really good value segment. Like, you get a lot of bang for your buck in that segment. These boards excel. I've said it several times throughout this video, but I really do like New Fi's um, design philosophy in terms of both, um, you know, features and attention to detail and aesthetics um, and all that. So, um, they continue to do a stellar job with uh, their boards um, from the Halo uh, or the Air series right through the Halo series here. Definitely excited to see what New Fi comes out with next. Oh, and those switches. I think I mentioned earlier I would talk a bit more about the switches. They're fantastic. They nailed it. Um, I really, really like the Night Breeze linears, um, but these Rose uh, Glacier um, tactiles are also excellent, and uh, they're actually cheaper than the Gatoron switches. I, I do like the BBK and the Baby Kangaroo and the Baby Raccoon switches as well. I think they sound very good, but uh, honestly, for my money, I think I have to give the edge to New Fi's own in-house switches here. Um, and uh, they, they do save you $10 on these boards. So I believe the Halo 75 starts at $130 with the new five zone switches on it. Um, and it's 140 if you want the Gatorons. Uh, the Halo 96 starts at 140 with the new five switches, goes up to 150 with the Gatorons. Fantastic pricing for either board. I think anyone would be really, really happy with these boards, provided they meet your needs in terms of features and all that. Um, I, you will not be disappointed in terms of build quality or sound or functionality. Um, and, hey, guess what, friends? You can save 10% on either of these boards or anything on New Fi's website for that matter. If you want to get the wrist rests, for example, the two-tone wrist rests, which are $30 a piece, um, you can save 10% on those as well. Um, or any of other, any of New Fi's other stuff. Maybe you just want to get their switches separately. You can do that too um, using the code ASMR. ASMR. I make it really easy for you. So just enter the code ASMR at checkout on New Fi's website. You'll save yourself 10% on your entire order. And there is a link down in the video description as well. Um, and uh, if you purchase through that link, or with that code, you will also be um, supporting me and uh, supporting this channel. So I appreciate that very much if you want to help out the channel and save some money while you're doing it and get some rad keyboards or keyboard components from NewFi. That is the way to do it. All right, my friends. Well, uh, this brings us to the end of what is surely an extremely long video. I have not added up the total length of all the pieces yet, but this might actually be a record-breaking video in terms of length for me. We'll find out, I guess, once I get it all together. And hey, not only is this a record-breaking video in terms of total length, potentially, but it's also a record-breaker in terms of my favorite space bar. My favorite space bar. I just can't get enough of them. It's not common that I just keep want, wanting to continue pressing a space bar on a keyboard. Usually the space bar is the one I don't want to keep pressing because it's the weakest sounding of the lot, but...
we might as well make this video a little bit longer, right? It's not long enough already. Uh, with some thanks to this channel's wonderful supporters, you can see all of their names right here. They all deserve thanks for their generous contributions to this channel and its content. And you, dear viewer, yes, you could have your name here on this special thanks page. You can check out the links down below in the video description where you'll find the links to my Patreon and my YouTube, and you can learn about the exclusive perks that you can get by signing up on either of those platforms, uh, Patreon or YouTube memberships. And there's one particular tier that gets an extra special spoken shout out in this video and every video for that matter. <laughs> and that is the Fusroda tier. And our Fusroda supporters for this video are Dragoon88, Ragnar Ragnarsson, Captain Vanquisher, Angel Garcia, Black Tooth Bob, Jake Lufney, Rango Steel, and Drummer Britt. What a fantastic group of folks. Once again, thank you, thank you to all of our wonderful supporters um, for their generosity and kind support of uh, what I do here. As I always say, it really helps. It gives me uh, some independence and freedom from uh, being beholden to sponsors and, um, you know, the... Uh, the vagaries of, of YouTube ad revenue and such. So thanks so much to these fine folks and make sure you check out those links if you're interested.